Hello and welcome to day one of the 30 day chart challenge. Today we are going to make a donut chart of the causes of death for the United States in 2019. The 30 day chart challenge is going on all throughout April 2021. It was created by Cedric Scherer and it will include 30 charts that fall under these five categories. Starting today with comparisons, showing a chart that visualizes part to whole comparisons. What I will be doing during the 30 days is to pick charts from this awesome collection called Our Gallery that was created by Jan Holz and I was always interested in going through his examples and the R code and showing different ways to visualize things. As I said, today we start with the donut chart and we will start with a very basic example and then show how to customize it and change even the width of the, the ring. And in the end, I will apply it to a more recent data set, visualizing the causes of death in the United States. The first thing we should do is load the library for ggplot. And I recommend to also load the whole tidyverse package, as some of the commands we'll be using will be from the tidyverse to manipulate the data. Let us first create a test data set with three different categories, ABC, and three sample values, 10, 60, and 30. And as the donut chart will show different proportions or percentages of the total numbers, first we have to create fractions by dividing the count by the sum of count. So there's no specific function to create pie charts or donut charts in the ggplot setup. So we have to use geomrect to build a stacked bar chart and then also cohort polar to make it circular. But before we can do this, we have to do two more calculations. First, we create cumulative percentages with the cumsum function based on the data fraction, fraction column that we just created. This ymax variable will function as the upper limit of each stacked rectangle. And for the lower rectangle, we have to compute the button which will start with zero and then only have the first two values of the y max and not the last one. Okay, if we run this code, we get a data frame that looks something like this. These are the original categories and the total numbers. These are the percentages that add up to 100 and the max is the culminative sum. So starting at 10%, adding 60, gets it to 70%, adding 30% gets it to one. And the y min starts with zero as specified here, and then excludes the top value from the head function. All of this could also be accomplished with the tidyverse approach, where you don't have to always specify the original data set and the columns. You can simply pipe it into the mutate function and then create all of the three different new variables in one nice clean approach. And if you do this, you see that the, the base values are the same as the tidyverse created variables. Okay, let us now make the plot. With ggplot and data, the aesthetics mapping now specifies the y max value, the y min value. And for the x axis, we can simply take 4 and 3. This is a bit arbitrary. I will show you in a second what this creates. And with fill, we use the categories. And now we add geomrect to get the following plot. So on the x-axis, you see that we specified going from 3 to 4. And now the y-min starts at 0, it starts at 0 0.1, and it starts at 0 0.7. And the y-max goes to 0 0.1, 0 0.7, and 1. Now there are two different ways to make this circular. If we add the coordinate polar function, we will get we will turn the rectangle into circles like this. This is not what we want. So we have to specify the theta relating to the y-axis and then it circles around the y variables. This is now just a pie chart. So we have to add the limitations for the x-axis and we set this to two and four. And now we have a hole in the circle because now it only goes from two to four and not to one or zero. Okay, let us now improve upon this chart with some customizations. We start again by loading the library and creating the data frame. But now we add another variable called label position, which will be right in the middle of the y max and the y min value. So like here, here and here. And also we compute a label value where we simply paste the category a, b, or z with the actual value after line break and the actual value will be the data count so the raw, the raw number in case you're not familiar with the paste zero function the regular paste has per default a space as a difference so if we want to plot the capital letters one to three a b and z with the numbers one to three 
we get the space in between. We could specify the separation with the set argument, and then it would look something like this. And what paste zero does, it by default has no space in between what you're going to paste together. The now created data set looks something like this. This was already there. Now we have the label position in between the min and the max, plus some value and category label. This was the code that we used before to make this plot. And now we're going to add the following two arguments. First, we add the geom label at the y position from the label position. The x we set to 3.5, halfway through 3 and 4. And the size we select 6. So this is what we get halfway through and at 3.5 right in the middle we get the category and the raw data. We can still improve upon this by using theme void which gets rid of all the coordinate system and lines. Another thing we can do is use a, a better looking palette from the scale fill brewer function and because we have all the information in the chart itself we won't need the legend so with theme legend position equals none we can get rid of this and have this improved upon chart now i want to show you how you can change the donut thickness again we have the data frame now everything happens within the mutate function label position label value okay so this is the data frame we're already familiar with also with the same functions for plotting now choosing from a different color palette that we will use for the text and the filling. And with the limitations you set for the x-axis, you can make this thinner or wider. If we use minus 10, then it will get even smaller. Okay, now the last thing I want to do is show the causes of death in the US from 2019. It's based on CDC government data. And I want to show the top 10 causes, which range from heart disease over cancer to stroke, Alzheimer's accident, suicide, and I specify the numbers here. With view data, we would get a table looking like this, where you see all the different causes. We still have to use the mutate function to create uh, the fraction, y max, y min, and the label position. And for the label itself, I'm going to combine lots of data, the name of the cause, and then a line break, round the death number by 1000, adding a K, and then also show the percentage rounded to one digit after the comma. Now, if I only wanted to show the top 10 10 causes all by itself, I would use a bar chart, get rid of the other causes, and then flip the x and y axis to show the bars in proportion to each other. This can be easily improved upon by using the scales library and then reorder the 10 causes based on the number and the FCT reorder function. So it already looks like this. We still flip it and then on the y axis use the label as comma. So this would be the proportions of the top 10 causes using geom label at the numbers. And this representation with bar charts, it's a bit better to show that the top two causes are heart disease and cancer, outweighing all the other eight causes by quite a bit. Now for the final donut chart, I will also use the ggrepel function and we will make use of the total number, which is the sum of death numbers from the data set. Another way to calculate the total which is 2.8 million, is to use a tidyverse approach with summarize. Okay, now I'm plotting it as we, we did in the past with a different palette that makes the, the colors between the categories better visible. And what we get now is the following. I did use the labs function where you can specify the title and the subtitle. And for the subtitle, I included the total we calculated before. And now you can see that roughly a quarter was due to heart disease, almost another quarter to cancer and it shows the, the actual numbers in the hundred thousands with the percentage belonging to it. Next was accidents and then chronic low respiratory disease, stroke, Alzheimer's, diabetes, kidney disease and suicide. And then a whole chunk, another quarter with even more different categories. Okay, that's about it. This was the first day of the 30 day chart challenge. Tomorrow I'm going to show tree maps, which are going to look like this. And I will be showing the annual budget spending of the United States in different boxes and rectangles. I hope you learned something today and maybe make use of the donut chart yourself to visualize things that interest you. See you next time.